Hi friends, it's Becky. And today I want to make some things with my Seafoam Sunrise um, Bargain Bead Box. I haven't made anything with it yet. And I wanted to also make some things with the companion bundle that I opened up with y'all yesterday. So what I'm thinking for this is two full sets. Ah! Can we do it? It'll end up being a really, really long video, which I'm sure if if y'all like hanging out with me while I'm making things, you are all about that. Um, but it will end up being pretty long because I am going to do full set, two full sets of jewelry, one with the bargain bee box and one with the companion bundle. And we'll just do them both at the same time. Like we'll do the necklaces together, then we'll do some bracelets together, then we'll do some rings, and then we'll do some earrings. Um, so settle in pause this and go get a drink, maybe a snack, something like that. And we'll, we'll hang out. And we'll do this together <laughs> if you want to. So here's what I'm thinking. And kind of what my plan is, is I've got the bargain bead box and I haven't made anything with it yet. So everything that came in the box is right here. Um, I'm going to show you before we start doing anything else, how I attached this little wrapped loop to the top of these top drilled um, drops that we got in the box because that will give this uh, glue some time to cure before we actually make earrings with these. Um, this is one that I made ahead of time so I'll be making this with y'all on that one and then I'll make the other one later afterwards. But I'm thinking that we'll do a necklace that is a beaded chain necklace because we got these eye pins and eye pins make beaded chains just a little bit easier than when you um, are just depending on some craft wire for that. Oh, this is the craft wire that I'm using for that, by the way. That's why it was just over here. But so we'll do a beaded chain necklace with this one using this Amazonite and probably some of these crystals, some of this chain and a clasp. We'll also do a beaded chain bracelet to go with it. Just same links that sort of thing, so that we've got a little bracelet that you can wear at the same time. Then we'll do some earrings and a ring, and I have not decided on the style of ring that I want to do with this one. Maybe it'll just be grabbing one of these um, like blue beads or something and putting a crystal in between it and then another one on the other side, and then just wrapping, I don't know. We'll get to that one when we get to that one. So that's what I'm thinking for this one. And then for this, I've got some head pins that we can use for some earrings and things. Um, we've got some spacers and we've got a ton of beads. And I was thinking of a memory, or sorry, yeah, memory wire bracelet for this one. And then just a strong necklace for our, um, for a necklace and then just some earrings with some of the maybe these briolettes and um, a blue bead and some of these probably for an earring um i have not again decided on a ring style but i think maybe one of these like sideways in a ring might look kind of cool I don't know. We'll, we'll figure that out when we get to it. But there's another component that I wanted to add to this. Um, when I was unboxing this, I mentioned that like Amazonite is like my peanut butter bead. It's the one that like when you go to the store and you come home and you put the jar of peanut butter that you were sure you needed away next to the other five jars of peanut butter that you completely forgot you had. Um, it's, it's my peanut butter bead. And so like, I have like a, some Amazonite in this bag actually that I hadn't ever like sorted into my stash or anything. Um, in fact, <laughs> I can probably pop this open and stick it right here and here, except I don't have enough room for that. Um, this one definitely, I still have some room to add to this over there with some of that. But there is this pendant, this dragonfly pendant. This is the, uh, the number for it. I do not know if they still have it on the site on Beadbox Bargains or not, but if they do, that's the product number. But it was this gorgeous ceramic dragonfly pendant. I mean, just look at that with these colors. Is it not 
perfect. So I'm going to use this as the main focal on this necklace that I do with this one. And this one, I'm going to use that for my focal. Oh, they also started carrying some seed beads there. And so I've got some of these Edo seed beads in like this frosted, um, like AB finish amber color. It's kind of the peachy color that that's the number 5,008 if they still have some available. And then they also had like some 11 O's in this uh, turquoise color that why not? Why not? Why not add these? Um, these are actually dyed quartz. So it's not the Amazonite, but it is that color. And they, they ended up in my, in my stash too. This is also the dyed quartz. And so the dyed quartz is probably going to end up in the memory wire bracelet that I make. But when we get to that, we're going to get to that. In the meantime, let's move some of these out of the way. But yeah, so I, I'm, I'm going to add a couple of other things outside of these. I mean, it's not like I don't have enough stuff here. I just was looking at the things in my stash and going like, you know what? This goes with it um, really well. And again, this is going to be a long video. So settle in. I'm just going to get these in here with all of their little friends. Since it's the same bead, I just ended up having like two strands of it. Perfect. And I think the version two of the uh, the companion bundle, because there were two versions. They usually, once the first version sells out, they'll put together another one. I think it might have come with some seed beads, um, but I'm not sure. And I don't know which flavor of seed bead they were, but they, they kind of go. Anyway, we'll we'll get those out when we get to them. But one of the things that I was thinking about doing is because I've got this kind of wrapped loop on the top of these um, top drilled brios, I was thinking about doing a wrapped loop at the top of this drop so that it would kind of match and go together. And since I'm going to be doing like a, a little wrapped loop at the top of it, I don't need this pinch bail for it. So I was thinking I would just use this pinch bail on my dragonfly. So let's get the pinch bell up attached and then I'll show you how to do this one and then we'll wrap this one and then we'll start planning out like what kind of links we're going to do and all I'm doing here is I'm just putting my chain nose pliers between these and just spreading them gently so that it'll fit around my ceramic dragonfly and then I'm going to close this up, pinch it closed right there inside my dragonfly. And now I have a bail for a necklace that will hold this guy. All right, setting this aside now that that's out of the way. But yeah, we've got everything that we need for making things. We move these out of the way again. So we can concentrate on these focals and what we are doing with them. And let's go over some of our tools that we're going to be using. I do use some tools for wire wrapping, like uh, my chain nose pliers, my um, flush cutters. I have some round nose pliers. And let me just see, did I use this or did I use, nope, about the middle. So that's about where I'm going to want my, my loop on all of these, let me just remember that, or I could mark it. I just mark it on here real quick. There we go. That's a good mark for that. All right, so I'm gonna use those. When I start doing my stringing, I'm going to be using my uh, magical crimper because I love using my magical crimper to crimp things. 
I have some two by two crimp tubes that we're going to be using for that and some copper color beading wire. I'm also going to probably be using some of this 20 gauge antique copper wire for all of this. That's what this is actually. It's exactly the, I had cut this off of here for all of that. Um, but the rest of the wire is going to be the findings that we got in our bags. And um, I'm probably, when I'm doing the rings, going to be using a ring mandrel. But if you don't have a ring mandrel and you have a ring that you know fits you, you can find something that you have around the house that it fits onto. And if it's a little bit loose, uh, somebody else uh, mentioned that you can even um, just wrap it in duct tape until it's the size that you want it to be. But yeah, so this is a tube of lipstick that fits my finger perfectly. And that's one of the things that if I need to, I can use that to make a ring. All right, I think that covers everything. Let's get started. All right, so one of the things that I've seen people doing with these top drilled brios is taking one of these eye pins, and this is the easiest thing to do. Is to take one of these eye pins and kind of cut it off just a little bit there, and then glue the eye pin right into the top. And then you've got a little dingle and a little loop. I've also seen folks do a, um, like wire wrap it like it is, it's an undrilled stone, which ugh, so many of them, they're so creative and they look amazing. Um, I'm not doing that. I'm just doing a basic little wrap like this and there's still gonna be glue and they're still doing that. And let me just grab my glue out too because I just had it. Like, just had it. Where did I put it? There it is. All right, I'm using Loctite glue because it um, glues uh, fairly quickly. It is um, hard and it's adhered within an hour. You still may want to, you know, before you wear it, wait 24 hours, but it's it does it pretty quickly. So I'm gonna be using that to get that on there. And I'm not gonna need to use glue on this one, just on this one. All right, I'm going to set this aside. And we're going to work on this guy. Let me find my flush end. And do I even have a flush end? All right. It doesn't actually kind of matter that it's flush or not. I just always feel better when I have a flush end to work from. And that's the thing about the flush cutters is when you look at it on that side, it is completely flush. So when it makes a cut, See that? It's it's sharp, a sharper edge that is just a flat edge instead of like this pointed edge that you get on the non-flush side where those there's that uh, that wedge between that for the blades. So that's 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 why I like flush cutters rather than regular um, wire cutters when I do jewelry making so that I can get that flush side. All right, so all I'm gonna do is find my little hole, stick this in here, and as long as it is as deep as it's going to be in there, I'm going to use my fingers here and just bend this over the top like that. Then I'm gonna take my stone away. I'm gonna make my loop. All right, so I got my round nose pliers and I made my little notation of where my loop was for that. I bend this all the way around. There we go. That's going to be a good loop for that. I'm just going to start my wrap right here. And then I'm going to continue my wrap holding this into my Brio, and it's gonna be difficult for you to see what I'm doing because I'm 
holding on to both ends of this. I'm pinching this and pressing this way towards the stone, and I'm pinching the stone in these fingers and pressing this way, and at the same time, I'm using this finger to start wrapping. So this is how we get a little wrap around, and now I'm going to pinch the top and the bottom together to kind of keep it from moving because I don't want it to rotate. The reason I don't want it to rotate is because it's not perfectly round and I would like my wrap to be shaped the same way as the top of this stone and not totally perfectly round but more of that that flat on two sides shape that we get. And I think I did four wraps around so like a lot of wire wrapping just go slow and it's going to come out, just push it right back in, because it's not glued yet. Keep going. One more. It's going to be a little bit easier and a lot less fiddly when we do this with the with this one, because it's got a hole that we can use to anchor our, um, our loop and our wire. All right. So this is the last wrap all the way around. I'm pushing down and pushing it around so that it will fit snug against here. And you see I've got my little wire in here that's going to go into this hole and then this part will go around it. And one of the reasons I decided to do this, I'm just cutting off my excess to make it flush. Why did it do that? Oh no. Hold on. Do I need to do that again? I cut part of my wrap too. So I'm just going to do this again. Movie magic! I did the exact same thing as I did before, only now I don't have a little cut in here. And we'll get ready to very carefully cut just the piece of wire that I want to cut. And not the rest of it. With my flesh cutters. Alright. So just double checking, that's how it fits. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this was because when you put the... Um, just the one stick into the hole you have like just that part that's adhering to the stone and this just gives me more area for the wire to adhere to the stone so more surface area for the glue to do its job to hold it and you know also it it looks kind of cool it looks like I have a top drilled briolette that I wrapped um, or a side drilled briolette so I'm just going to take my Loctite and before I actually start playing around with this, where is some scrap paper? Aha! Uh -huh. Scrap paper. Uh, this was... Receipt. Let's just use that. It is right next to my desk. This way, if I drip any glue it will not get on my beading mat or my desk. Scrap paper. All right, so I've got this guy here. I'm just gonna put a little drop all around the edges of this. Little drop onto the this one here. And a little drop of glue right here on the top of this hole. And then I'm going to stick this in, hold it tight, and I'm just going to wait like 30 seconds, 15 seconds, something like that. The Loctite, again, it, it cures and it dries and it, it adheres a lot faster than some of the other jeweler's glue that we use. And so I'm using that and then 
I'll have these guys ready to go. So this one is the one that I just finished gluing. This one's all done. It's been done for days. I'm going to set that one aside because we're going to use that when we make our earring. Because I'm just going to do one with y'all and I'll make the second one later. Uh, let me hold that a little bit longer because it kind of popped up just now. And then I'll set this aside to finish curing. Now that I'm done with that glue, I'm going to set it aside on this paper after it's done. Okay, I think it's good for now. Just put that over there. And now let's echo and mirror that wrap here. And I think I'm going to add a tool to my little arsenal. I think what I'd like to do is use my bail making pliers for my loop when I do this and I'm gonna go ahead and use my biggest loop right here so let's pull off some of this 20 gauge wire and I'm gonna pull off more than I did for the other ones because I didn't have that much area that needed to be wrapped and this one's going to be a little bit longer. And all I'm doing here is I'm pinching the wire with my fingers, kind of bending it one way and then bending it the other. And it helps get kinks out of the wire and it warms it up to make it easier for working with. This is dead soft wire, so it's going to be easy to work with initially. But it's nice to get those kinks out. Um, if you use some um, some nylon gel pliers, you can use that to straighten it out. When you do that, it does work hard in the wire a little bit, which maybe you want, maybe you don't want. Again, it is dead soft, so work hardening it a little bit might make that a little bit easier for you to work with. So it's not like overbending or anything like that. All right, so the hole goes through here from the side. So what I'm going to do is put this up here about an inch in and then bend up from there. And then I'm going to bend back like that. So this isn't going to be centered over the whole thing. It's going to be coming up straight out of the back of it like that. And all I'm going to do is just wrap this around here once. And it doesn't need to be a pretty wrap. And then cut this there. Because this is going to be holding this stone in. And then the rest of the bale is going to come down around all of that. And that's why I have all of the rest of this wire over here for this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing this as a beaded chain necklace. So I'm going to want the circle on my bale to uh, like the face of my circle, the open part to be facing me when I'm looking at this. So I'm going to attach each side of my chain to the other side of this circle. So I'm going to bend this to the side and not towards the back so that when I make my loop, it'll be like drop and then a circle on top of it. I'm going to use my bail making pliers and I told you I wanted to use my biggest loop for this. I'm just pulling my wire all the way around here. like that. I think that's a good balance in size. And I'm just going to start going down towards my wraps down here. I might have to double wrap, wrap over a couple of things. 
this is going to stop it from swinging around once we get it wrapped all the way. And wire working, go slow, take your time, be patient. I just want all of my wraps to cover this little hole here. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. You see how nicely that looks next to this one? Don't talk to me or my son ever again. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm going to cut off my excess back here. I wanted it to end here in the back. And I've got this edge right there in the back. I'm going to just tuck that in with my chain nose pliers underneath this last wrap if I can manage it. There we go. Perfect. All right, so that is that focal done. And I've got the other focal done. So let's start planning our necklaces because the necklaces are the part that's probably gonna take the most amount of time of all of these. And we're doing beaded chains on this side. So we're gonna be using these guys and we're stringing on this side. So let's see what we're going to do. Let me figure out some links for this one. Now we've got some um, like triple chain connectors or things that we could make drops out of on this side. And I think I'm going to save that for another project and probably use these in that project as well. Because I don't have to do all of my stuff all in the same day. Um, I'm going to pull these out for bracelet and necklace. Got my chain. Put that over there because we can do just like mm, three links and then finish with the rest of the chain for this necklace. I think that would be really great looking and then we can make a little link with some of these guys for the earrings let me grab a couple of these ear wires out of here so i've got a bracelet coming a necklace coming we've got earrings figured out and then we'll do a ring probably and i'm i, I think i might do this for a ring Let's just, we'll, we'll try it. We'll try it. We'll see how it works. Okay, so now for links. I think I definitely want to use these Amazonite stones with this. One, two, three. One, two, three. Question is, on these links, do I want to use these crystals as well? I think I might. Hold on. One, two, three, four. Do I have enough for this? Five, six. I, I really like these, these creamy colored crystals. Two, three, four. Um, I need two more. Two more. Got one down here. Oh no, I need four more. There we go. This guy right here. Okay, so I really like those colors with that together. Do I have enough room on this for all of those plus these tiny Amazonite guys? 
is this going to fit and still give me enough room to make my simple loop at the end? Let's find out. That one has kind of a smaller hole, so it didn't quite fit on the end of this. Come on, buddy. Rather than break my little gemstone, I'd rather, you know what? It might just be the end of this, having this catch on the end. like this. Okay, yeah, that one fits. Mm. It might be enough space. If I add these, is that going to be too much? Let me, let me, let me see. Because these add a little bit of space between the beads as well. These are the bead caps that came in the box. You know what, I think I'm going to have to just have these on their own. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to have room for all of those other things. So let's grab these bead caps out. And these can be part of a different design at a different date. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have any real, real plans when I started this video. I just had like some vague ideas and we're just seeing what works, you know? We're gonna play around with the beads, see how it comes together. And at the end of it, we should have something pretty to look at. I do like it with these bead caps though. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how to do it with the round nose pliers to make a simple loop. And then I'm going to grab my one step loopers to do the rest of these because it's just makes it a little bit easier. And I started using these recently. So I'll show you both ways. So if you don't have one step loopers, you can still do this. It's easy to make a simple loop. I'll show you how I do it. So to make a simple loop, and you've got to kind of look at the, the direction of this loop. So if I turn it this way, it kind of disappears. And if I turn it this way, I can see like the face of that loop. So when I want to do my loop, I want to bend my wire first, and I'm going to bend in the same direction that this goes so that when I make my loop, both of the circles are visible at the same time. And that's just because I want both of my loops to be parallel and not perpendicular. So I'm just bending this over carefully right there up above the end of this. And I've learned from um, experimentation that if I hold the bead here in my finger, the part of my finger right here where my nail meets it, that part tells me that that is long enough right here to make a simple loop with my round nose pliers. And so that's where I would cut it. That is about one centimeter. So if you've got, this is, this is a centimeter up here. So if you've got something to measure it with, like a ruler or something, one centimeter is what you're gonna want to look for. 
when you cut off your excess. And when I do this, I'm just tipping this down towards my mat so that when I clip it, because there's not enough um, of the wire for me to hold on to so that it doesn't go flying. So when I clip it, it will go flying into the mat and not, you know, into anywhere else. That's just why I, I tip it down towards the mat when I do that. I just don't want it to go flying. All right, so then I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to start bending it back. And if you don't have enough room for it to meet at the point where you're at, just slide down the barrel a little bit until you get to the right place with those round nose pliers and keep rolling it until you get your loop. And that's how you make a simple loop using your round nose pliers. And now I'm going to use the, uh, this one, I actually did a full review of these, um, the things, the one step loopers, like all of those steps that I just did bending it and then cutting it and then looping it. Um, those are multiple steps that you take and the one step looper lets you just do one step. You put it in, you squeeze the thing, you take it out. Um, which again, I guess technically are a bunch of steps, but it's pretty helpful if you've got some mobility issues, if you've got maybe arthritis and twisting your wrists, gives you aches and pains and fits to be able to do, just pop it in, make a loop and you're ready to go. Um, so I just pop this guy in here. And what I want to make sure is that there's a little bit of space between my bead and the one step looper because when it comes around, there's this is going to push against my bead right there. That part will push against it. And if I don't leave a little bit of space, it can possibly break the beads that are on there. So I'm holding this this way. And you can also make sure when you do this that it's going to be facing the same way. And I've got that space there so it doesn't break my beads. I just do a little bloop like that and it doesn't uh, center your bead you know how I did the little bend before I made my loop you do that to center your loop so I'm just going to take my link and bend it back a little bit like that to help center my loop when I take it off of there and there I have my little simple loop for my link and then I'm just going to do that with the rest of these guys should make it a little bit easier. And um, if you don't mind, I'm going to not hold my looper under the camera so you can see, because when I do that um, repeatedly, I feel some strain in my wrist from having to hold it like at an awkward angle so that y'all can see it. Um, I just demonstrated it, so you can just take my word for it that the comfortable angle that I'm holding it with I'm doing exactly the same thing, just not directly in front of the camera because holding it in front of the camera is awkward and causes me a little bit of strain. <laughs> so if you want to see it again, hit the little rewind. Just go back a little ways and see what I did before. That's the great thing about this being recorded and not live is that if you miss it, you can go back and watch it again. All right. And I just have two more loops to do on this. Oop. Now that loop is not loopy enough. So I'm going to take my Around those pliers and kind of fix that loop, which is something that you are all totally allowed to do. You can fix the loops, get them right. And I'm thinking that I'm going to use some um, jump rings to connect my loops together or my links. 
for this. So I'm going to be grabbing some of those out of my finding stash. Ah, I forgot the beginning one. There we go. I think I'm going to need another one of these bead caps. All right, one more, one more link. You know, yeah, I think, I think this will do it for my necklace. And then I'm probably going to need to make a couple of these for a bracelet as well. did not loop the way I wanted it to. So let's just fix that. All right, got my links. Let's put this together. Let's make our necklace. All right, I need my jump rings and my jump rings have like bright copper I don't have any I don't think hold on I might have some in here but they're all sorts of different sizes um yeah let's just use the bright copper ones that I've got here that'll work pretty sure I have some antique copper jump rings somewhere amongst my findings, but I am not sure where that would be because I haven't completely organized my findings yet, which is a problem. I'm gonna need one, two, three, four. So four of them on that side, four of them on the other. Two, three, four, one more. All right, here we go and possibly a couple for the closure. All right, that should be enough. And if you can't tell, I still haven't um, organized the jump rings that fell and opened up all over the place yet. Cause you know, that's a chore and it's kind of fine like it is, but I did get one of these so they won't open up when they fall again. <laughs> All right, let's put you together. All right, to open up the jump rings, we're gonna swing it open. You can use a jump ring ring. I've demonstrated that before. I don't have one handy. Oh wait, there is one right there, yeah. And to do that, you're gonna hold on to the jump ring on one side and then kind of slide the edge of it into this jump ring ring. And I don't use this very often, so I'm not very good at it. And open it like that. Then you can put on the things that you want to connect. Pop that end back in there and close it. Or you can hold one end of the jump ring with something that holds it steady, like another pliers, or these are just my um, my uh, my crimpers. They've got a nice flat inside, except for the concavity where it makes the crimp. So they actually work really well for that. And put on the two bits that you want to connect, and then hold that other side and swing it closed. So you can do either way 
get it open and closed. Um, one thing that I always forget is that um, round nose pliers are not good for that. They're not great at holding the jump rings. You want something that's kind of flatter to do it. Also, this will not hold your jump rings very well either. It will ruin them, so don't use this. Just a little advice from me. Only use your flush cutters for cutting wire. And one, two, three. One, two, three. That one was closer to where my hand was. It's helpful to, to become familiar with like more than just one type of tool so that, you know, in case you can't find that tool or something, you've got other things that you can use. And these are different sizes for different gauges of the wire. Like this won't fit in here, but it fits great in here. And then like thicker jump rings, you could put into these other slots. So it has multiple slots and multiple sizes. Um, for some reason, you usually get these a lot in like jewelry making kits that you buy or things like that. All right, so we've got this part and now I'm going to be attaching my chain. What I'm going to do to figure out the sizing for this, so I'm going to attach one end of the chain here and then I'm going to put this around my neck and see where it falls on the other side so I can cut my chain to the right length. I'll attach the other end of the chain here and then I'll cut the chain in half or I might do that before I before I attach the other side. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll do it like that before I do the, the thing. It's just, it's a method for finding the right length for the chain so I don't have to futz with like how long this is and measuring and math because I always mess up the math. I'm just gonna tell you, right, honestly right now, I always mess up the math when I am trying to measure my jewelry. So I'm just opening up my jump ring attaching my chain. This is the curb chain that came in the bargain bead box. All right, so now I'm going to pick this up and put it around my neck to get my right length. And I like a shorter necklace, so it's not going to be super long. I'm going to have the, um, the beaded chain, the beads portion, end about at my collarbone. So this part is just going to be along the back of my neck. And I'm going to keep in mind that the clasp will take up about an inch of space. So if it's a little bit tighter than I want before I cut it, then once it's all cut, then it'll be perfect. All right, so this is the part of the chain that I'm gonna to want to cut for this. Let me see, are these welded shut or do they swing open? Aha, they swing open. So I can open this link like a, um, they're, they're not soldered shut. So I can open it like a jump ring without having to cut the chain or use my wire cutters on them, which I could do, but it's a little bit easier just to remove that link. There we go. And now I have some extra chain that I can keep around for other purposes. All right, and I need to find the middle of this chain. And so I'm just gonna put this link and this end link on a piece of wire and then let it dangle and find the middle of the chain. And it's actually these two
uh, right here. I'm going to cut that one and this one. There we go. See, you, you can cut it with wire cutters. And I'm going to attach the other side. And then we'll attach our um, clasp. And that one will be done. And we can do our stringing necklace with this guy. It helps if you open it wide enough. Because if you don't, then you can't ever get anything on your jump ring. Follow me for more tips. <laughs> uh, no, but really, if, if you want to see more of what I make, hit that subscribe button. Because, you know, I, I post things. I make things. I, I will I will talk to you the whole time that I'm doing it. And some people enjoy it. All right. Oop. You know how what I was saying about how this is terrible for opening jump rings with? It's true, and I should listen to my own advice. I use a tool that you actually do things with. Oh boy. See, this is why I brought that up, is because I do that all the time. I grab the wrong tool. Uh, can't take me anywhere. What am I, you know, I was just looking for my other jump ring. I was like, I, I should have two of them. It's right here in my hands, guys. It's right here in my hands. Where's my other jump ring? Yes. Anyway, if you're new to my channel, this is who I am as a person. <laughs> Feel free to yell at me when you notice that I've forgotten something. I'll probably hear ya. All right, woo! I like it, I like it a lot. All right, so that is one necklace done. And I think for this, I'm going to grab one of these crystals that has the the two sides because I don't have any more of the completely oh wait a minute do I maybe I do I have one of them that's not enough for two earrings that's not enough for two earrings all right so I'm gonna grab these guys and a couple of these guys and we're gonna make a little earring with this and um, we're gonna use these to make a link I'm gonna start with one of these that actually fits on here and maybe a little bit of a search to find one there's one Oop, nope it doesn't fit all the way there we go and then this over this. And like I said, I'm gonna do one of these earrings with y'all. And then I will do the other one afterward on my own. So you don't have to watch me try out all of these little Amazonite um, teeny tiny gems and discard them for not being able to fit on this wire. That one fits. All right, so there we go. So that is a little link there. 
So this is going to be holding it this way so that the loop sort of disappears from view when it's linked to it. How does the ear wire go? Okay, so I'm going to want the top loop to be perpendicular or facing the other direction for this. So for that, I'm going to want to make sure that I can see it. And you can always change the orientation of your loops after you've made them. But I like to, you know, give myself a little head start with my loops um, because the less I have to change it, the stronger my links will be. It's just, you know, every time you have to bend and rebend wire, you weaken it just a little bit. So starting how I mean to go on is the best thing to do. You can always fix it though. To do that, you would just take like two pliers and you hold one like that. Like, like I said, this, this makes a good plier and the other like that. And you make sure that you can make a cross with it. That's for perpendicular. And if you want them to be the same, you would just change it so that they're like that. See, now one of my loops disappears when I'm looking at it this way. And then the other loop disappears when I'm looking at it this way. And that, that makes sure that it's looped and oriented accordingly to the way I have planned it. So now I can open up this loop and I'm going to swing it open just like you swing open a, um, a jump ring. And I'm going to put my dangle onto that. One of the easiest and most effective ways of making a, an earring, in my opinion, is this type of thing where you've got a dangle and then you've got a little link on top of your dangle and then the the link attaches to an ear wire and I have made a lot of earrings like that one of my favorite things to do is make earrings all right and this is which way is all right this is the front all right <laughs> all right so there we have a earring to go with our guys right there. All right, earrings done, necklace is done. I am putting these guys over here for the second earring because this guy over here is being left alone so he can, you know, think about what he's done. Become a, a whole, a whole person. All right, now let's work on our other necklace and earrings. And for that, we're going to use some beading wire. This is our focal. I love this dragonfly. It is so cute. If you haven't seen my, um, I like to do an, an art and jewelry making thing every now and again. And I just painted some dragonflies yesterday. It was such balm to my soul to be able to do that. I loved it. And so if you haven't seen that video, it's in, it's on my channel. Um, you can you can watch it or just you know skip to the end so you can see the all of that. Uh, but I do that with the curated bead box, um, not the bargain bead box. I've done some with the bargain bead box before though. So some of those. All right, now let's get these guys out. And I think for this I am going to be using some of these. And these fun kidney wires. They've got like some sparkle on them. We've got some spacers. I'm definitely, definitely pulling these guys out. We're going to use them. Ooh. These smaller beads right here. some of these guys. Why are you so hard to get out of there? Mm -mm -mm, I need my bead scoop. I have a bead scoop. All right, and let's 
see. I think we're going to want to add a couple of these guys so that it'll go with the sparkles on there. All right, so let's move these out of the way because we'll address the the issue of Start from the middle and just go up one side. So I'm going to go ahead and string my dragonfly onto this wire and I'm not going to cut it till I'm done. I'm just going to be stringing up one side of the wire while I decide what order I want my beads to be in. And then we'll string up the other side. I think I need, no, how about these right next to it? Okay. The spacer is too small, it would go underneath and into that bale. The bicone. Another one of these spacers. And one of these guys. Oop. I think Ellen is having some troubles. Another space. Bicone, spacer, one of these guys, I want something that looks like it's murky waters, one of those, oh, I like it already, I like that already. All right, and then let's go back down. Bicone spacer. There's going to be a lot of spacers for this. And then another blue guy. Another spacer. Another bicone. I'm sure, I'm getting some use out of this bicones. They're such a pretty color, though. I love, I love that color. All right, and now I'm going to do three of these guys on a row. One, two, three. And I want just different colors of them all lined up. I love how much variation in color there are on these stones like that. And then I'm going to repeat this, I think two more times for the necklace. So I finished up this side and I checked the length and it's exactly the length that I want. So what I'm going to do now is put my little stopper on the end of this wire. I'm actually going to stop it a little bit closer to the beads so that I have some room for crimping on that end. Pull this wire up here and cut it at about the same length. And then I'm going to string on the other side in this exact same pattern. And I think I want to try a little magic trick with y'all. Hold on. Let me get this, this out here. Ready? Abra. Kadabra! Ta-da! 
All right, so now I'm going to attach my clasps and that necklace will be done. And then we can start on our bracelets. Oh, or I might do neck. No, I did earrings with this one. So I'll do earrings with this one and then we'll do bracelets. Okay, yeah. Don't get ahead of yourself, Becky. All right, I'm going to be using some two by two crimp tubes and my magical crimper to attach my clasps. And I wanted to use these magnetic clasps that came in this box. There we go. You could use any clasps. I could, I've got um, some other ones that, uh, like these heart-shaped ones that are really cool. I could use those, the number for those. I've got these three strand ones too that I think might be kind of cool. Actually, I might use these with those um, chandelier components. Oh, that's that's a fantastic idea, Becky. Okay, hold on. <laughs> but that that's another project. It's another project. It's not this one that we're doing today. I'm just gonna pop my crimp tube onto my beading wire, put it through the end of the clasp, which since it's a magnetic clasp, it is going to be very attracted to this wire. That's okay. And then feed that through my loop. And I think through, no, the wire is not gonna fit through those. But it will fit through this um, spacer. It's got a nice wide hole. Come on, buddy. Oof. tubes a little on the tight side that's okay because it just means it'll hold it better it does mean that I am having to use the pliers to get everything through here just trying to get that there close up that loop and then I gotta make sure there's a little bit of space between that bead and the crimp so that I can put it centered in this concavity on my magical crimper. Because that is what allows me to make the first squish. And it squishes like just the edges. And then when you turn it and squish it from a different angle, and then turn it and squish it from a different angle, and then just keep doing that from different angles it rounds out those sharp edges that it made on the first um, squish. And it leaves you with this rounded little crimp. It's nice and smooth, and that's one of the reasons why I love using it. Because then I don't have to worry about crimp covers or anything like that. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Put the wire through the crimp, put it through the clasp, bend the wire back through the crimp, fiddle around with the crimp to get that wire through. Uh, struggle with the magnetic clasp. <laughs> it's an important component to making things. Uh, right. There we go. I'm just going to put that through there. And 
I just want to make sure that this isn't going to be too tight. So I'm going to curve up my, my guy while I snug this up. And again, I'm just using my fingernail to stick it between that bead and the crimp to make sure I've got a little bit of space for my final crimp. And these magnet clasps will stick to any metal tools that you've got. It's not just the magical crimpers, although the magical crimpers are also magnetic, which I don't know why they are, but you know, that's fine. Or maybe it's just mine is. All right. There we go. Now the necklace is done. And I'm actually super pleased with this one. I love this. And I love this little pattern that I came up with for my beads so much that when I make my bracelet, I'm just going to use the same pattern um, with a memory wire. I'm just going to bead the exact same pattern on it. Um, yeah, uh, let's do earrings. I decided while I was stringing this along that I'm not going to use these kidney ear wires. I'll use that in a different project, but not this one. I'm not feeling it for that. I think I want to just use these other ear wires that came in the bargain bead box right here and we've got these head pins that came in the um, the the thing with the guys who do the thing the companion bundle. That's that's the word I'm looking for. We have these and they'll probably work, but I was kind of feeling like maybe I wanted some fancier head pins and I've got these that are also antique copper. They're pin 545 on the website. Cuz they just have some some fun little details down there on the bottom, so I'm going to use them instead. I'm just going to start with my heaviest bead from this pop a little spacer in there, put on my next heaviest bead, another little spacer, and another reason why I am using these ones is because they are much longer than these other head pins, so I'll be able to fit more beads on my little drop, my little dangle, another spacer, Oop. I need a bead before I put that spacer on, one of these guys, another spacer, and finally, spy cone, and one more spacer. So it's a fairly long drop, but I think it'll look really great. And so I'm going to make a loop up here on the top. I've got this that I'm about to snip off. There's not enough wire on this edge for me to hold on to. So when I do that to keep it from going flying, I just point it towards my bead mat and that way it has a soft spot to fly into <laughs> instead of going across the room. If it's long enough to hold on to, I hold on to that when I clip it so it doesn't go flying. And then I'm just going to roll this back with my round nose pliers. And you can use the, um, the one-step loopers if you wanted. But I'm just making myself a little simple loop on there. And then I'm going to attach my simple loop to these ear wires by swinging her open like a jump ring. Touching it on and then closing that up. And I will finish the second earring 
offline because this is already a very long video with lots and lots of editing that I'm going to be doing. But that should give me a nice earring to go with this necklace. And the bracelet that's going to go with it is just going to be um, some memory wire. Now, I don't have any antique copper memory wire. So I grabbed one of these spacer beads and I used this Loctite and I just glued a little spacer bead and it's pretty secure on there. I'm going to not futz with it too much. And I'm going to just have that on there and I'm going to do this exact same beading pattern, which you've already seen me do. So I'm not going to repeat it on there. I'm going to string it onto my memory wire. When I get to the end, I'll show you how I finish it off with some more glue and another spacer. So we'll do that when we get to it. Um, and I will do that bracelet after I show you how I make the other bracelet because we're doing necklaces and then earrings and then bracelets. And then after we do our bracelets, we'll do a ring. Okay, so I've got my necklace here for this one. This was with the bargain bead box. And these links, four, five of these links will fit around my wrist. So I made four of them with exactly the same links, but just with a different outside bead. It's this one that's two-toned. So I've got those. And then I'm going to make a central focal link that these four can be on either side of. And I'm using um, why can I not remember the name of this stone? I'm using those those uh, those rounds, these sort of spacer metal beads, and then one of these matte carnelian beads. And I wanted one with lots of these like striations and things on it because it's going to be like dead center of this bracelet. And because this will not fit on one of these the uh, eye pins, I'm going to make my own link using my 20 gauge wire. So to do that, I'm going to roll it off a little bit from my spool, straighten it out some, and again, the same way that I straightened it before. And I like to pre-string my, my uh, beads for my links it just helps me to not waste too much of my wire with these. So I'm going to do a wrapped loop on this and then I can just attach these links to it. These links will also just be attached directly to each other instead of having some um, jump rings with them. All right, so now that that's strung on here, I'm going to about two and a half inches down from the end, just going to bend this back with my pliers and then using my round nose pliers or using um, the uh, bail making pliers that I showed you earlier. I'm going to push my wire up around the top, rotate it and come up under it so it makes kind of a curly cue. And now that that loop is created, I'm going to hold on to it. And for this, because it's such software, I'm just going to use my fingers to push it around that uh, central wire core and wrap it about three times like that. And I can cut off my excess. The other loops that I made were simple loops. This is a wrapped loop. I need to cut off just a little bit more. It's poking out some. There we go. And now that I've got that wrapped on that side, I'm going to measure about three fingers from the bottom of my bead. And that's where I'm going to cut because that will give me enough wire to be able to do my second wrapped loop on the other side. All right, so up here at the top, 
of my wrapped loop. I've got my, my loop down here at the bottom. I'm gonna turn it so I'm not looking at the circle, so it looks like a line. And then grab my chain nose pliers, and I'm gonna grab the wire right here at the top of the bead. And just push the wire over the top of that, like that. And that gives me some space down here to wrap around after I've made my loop. And I make my loop, bring it up around, adjust if I need to. I'm going to hold on to my loop with my pliers. And again, just with my fingers, wrap around that core until I get to my bead. That makes a nice wrapped loop. Ah! Cut off my excess. It went flying, but it went flying into my finger. It's fine though. I'm not bleeding. It did not break the skin. All right. So now I've got all five links that I'm going to use. Let's open and close them and get them connected to each other. This one can't open. That's the thing about the wrapped loop is they're closed links. So I'm going to be opening and closing these guys. One. And it's possible because this is a very long link that I'm going to have to bend it so that it will fit around a wrist better. But we will do that after I get these other guys connected. So that's one, two, three, more and four and I had an idea about the ring for this I don't know if it's going to work or not but I think it'll be really cool if it does and that is bracelety let's just do a little bit of a bend on this to help it be more bracelet -y, to help it be rounder. Alright, so maybe I should be using some jump rings so that I get a little more length. Try it again with some jump rings. I'm going to need jump rings anyway to attach my clasps. So although I can attach the clasp directly to this link here, I like to have something skinnier than these on the toggle part so it will actually toggle. Do you remember how I was saying that round nose pliers aren't very good at this? This is what I'm saying. Like they might hold it steady for a little bit, but it's a little slippery. Putting that down, grabbing this guy. 
because I just don't feel like fiddling around that much. Just not in the mood for it. Not today. I'll fiddle around a little bit, but not a lot. I'm going to be fiddling around a lot with the rings. I can tell you that already. Because one of the goals of doing my project where I did a full set for the entire month of February um, was to get me more practice doing rings. I'm still not 100% great at it, but I'm still trying. And I'm still working on it. And I think that's the important part is that we keep trying, you know, even if we're not great at it. Um, oh, hold on. I got to close this loop first before I connect it to anything. There we go. Closed. This is just giving me a little bit of length on my bracelet as well as giving it a little more slink. Yeah, one more. Then we will do our closure. And I don't think y'all need to be here for the memory wire bracelet because it's exactly the same pattern as I was doing over there. So I don't need me to talk you through which ones I'm doing next and which, um, except that I am going to be starting with the three beads here and then my pink bead and then my blue bead pink, clear, pink, blue, pink, and then those three. So that's that's the whole thing that I'm going to be doing for the memory wire bracelet. But I will show you how I finish it and how I glue on the, um, the little spacer bead at the end. Once we get there. See, that's much better. It closed a lot of that gap and that space can be taken up by my clasp. So one of these for this. Just making sure that that's going to Hmm. This might need a little more. Did I did I check that this would work on this? Okay, yes, that's perfect. But it also bends over on the side. So let's do two jump rings for this one so that it has that articulation. Yeah. It's gonna be important. I have been stymied by toggle clasps by not giving the toggle part enough room or space to be able to maneuver correctly when it's time to actually attach it to. Actually, um, I have to open this next one anyway, so let me just close this one and then I'll attach both together. This one and this one. Right, so does it go in? Will it, will it bend? There we go. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so, so far, that's what I've got. All I have left to do is the ring for this set well, and the other earring, but like I said, I will do that one off camera. Let's get working on the bracelet for this one. Like I said, I already glued on 
one of these guys. So I'm going to just start stringing. And then once I feel like it's long enough, I am going to come back to y'all and show you how I finish this up. Now one tool that I will absolutely suggest that you use if you're doing memory wire, because I have ruined so many of my flush cutters trying to cut memory wire with them. These are memory wire cutters and they do not cost a lot. This Beditive brand is just fine. It does the job. It does all of that. And I've saved money by not having to buy so many flush cutters because I was ruining them. <laughs> I started buying them in bulk. So I'll put a link to this in the description below. Actually, I'll put a link to most of the tools that I use if you wanted to get some, but I absolutely like this has been a game changer for me. You know, I used to avoid memory wire bracelets because I was like, ah, I'm just going to ruin my ply my cutters again. But no, not, not with this. So I'm going to string these on and I'll meet you back here at the end and I will show you how to attach one of these using this. It's pretty easy. Spoiler. All right, so here we are. I have strung on as much as I can. Um, it's going to be about two wraps around my wrist when it's all done. And I've used all of my spacers except for one. I did go ahead and finish that second pair of earrings or second earring on that side um, just to make sure that I had enough spacers for that. So what I'm going to do now is before I put on this last spacer, I'm going to cut my memory wire. I'm going to use, again, my memory wire cutters. I'm going to cut pretty far away from where, about an inch away from where my um, bracelet is going to end. And then I can put that away. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue my end um, spacer onto the wire here and I'm going to wait to cut the rest of this off until after it has cured. That way it will it won't fall off and all my beads won't spill out and all of that while I'm waiting for that to cure. So what I'm going to end up doing is just setting this aside and not touching it and letting this finish hardening. And then when it's all done, then I'll go ahead and cut off that extra bit. So I'm going to take my um, Loctite I'm going to put some glue right here on the end, right next to this bead on the wire here. So I don't want the glue up here on the end. I just want it here where I want the spacer to stay. And I'm just going to scooch this carefully over the glue. Right there. I'm just going to hold it here for a minute. This Loctite doesn't take long. So I'm just going to hold it this way. And then I can gently set it aside and let it finish what it's doing. I really, really like the way that this, this bracelet turned out. It looks pretty rad. See if I can cut right next to it. Oh, don't go anywhere, don't go anywhere. Let that stay on there. Right, right there on the end. Yep, don't go anywhere. Should have waited a little bit longer. It's fine. It's fine. So 
because I could see the little bit of metal right in there. I'm just gonna put a teensy bit of Loctite right here on the very tip of this. And wait, and not, not touch it. Except for where I'm holding it. But yeah, you know when I was getting the beads out and I thought maybe I would do a ring with these? I totally changed my mind and I'm not going to do that. Um, although that is going to be a backup plan in case my idea that I'm having doesn't work. We'll, we'll try that one instead. And then I am going to go ahead and try doing a little ring with this wonky looking guy for my other ring. Because I've done necklaces, we've done earrings, and we've, we're doing bracelets right now. Or we just finished bracelets. And so all that we have left are the rings. And then I will have two full sets. And it's been a little while since I did a full set video. So, you know, I was feeling more up to it able able to handle things um it will take a lot of editing when i'm done with it so you might not see it on saturday when i'm actually making it you may see it on sunday which you know happens again because it's gonna take some editing all right it's still tacky I just want to be able to set this down without the beads falling off. All right, let me set it gently, gently. I feel like I'm Wesley in the Princess Bride. There we go. All right, I'm not gonna touch that now. Not touching it until later. Um, you guys saw what it looks like. So when I do like the wrap up, finish up, I'm not touching it until way later, just so you know. I love this guy. And I love this guy. They look so cool together. Anyway, let me move these, these two out of the way. I've got my little guy here and he has cured very nicely. He's not going anywhere. So I could actually finish making that earring as well. But first, let's put a ring on it. All right, I'm gonna start with this one. And for this, I'm just gonna go ahead and go with some 22 gauge wire. Pull off a whole bunch of it. Straighten it out. This is going to be one that I'm just going to do a couple wraps around my, my guy here. So let's cut off some wire. That's about 14 inches of wire. I'm going to find the middle with my bead or the middle-ish with my bead. Okay, there. That, that's a good middle spot. I'm just going to bend this down here like this so that it stays in that spot. And also so that when I am putting it on my mandrel, because it's kind of a longer bead, it has some room to go places. And I'm going to pull the wire around one side and then under. And then around the other side and under. Give it a little bit of a tug on both sides. And I'm just going to start wrapping while this is still on the mandrel. And I'm just going to wrap around the bead and the wire. All right. And now you've got it at some ends. All right, I'm gonna tuck those in in a minute. But before I do that, while this is still on the mandrel, I'm going to grab a nylon hammer. 
And I'm just going to tap the wires all the way around just to work harden them and help them stay like ring shaped. This is a super, super quick, super simple ring. All right, and now that those are round, I'm going to take the end of this wire and tuck it under like that. And then take the end of this wire and also tuck it under. Here, let's do it like that so you can see where the wire is going a little bit better. I'm going to tuck it around one more time. There we go. And I'll try to keep my finger in here to keep the this wire where it needs to be. There's the pliers. Just want to wrap it one more time around here. I don't want three wraps, just two will do. And then here on the inside. Scooch that up. Scooch that up. Smush those in so they are under this wire and not over it or under the bead. got some pokey outy bits. I'm gonna cut that off. And again, being careful just to cut the wire that I want to cut. And a pokey outy bit over here. And now I have a ring. That was a very fast and simple ring. And I guess this is one of the benefits of having done so many rings during February is that now I can do a quick and simple ring like this with more confidence. <laughs> so I'm gonna set that guy over here with this guy and just remember that the memory wire is being left alone. All right, so let's get the other ring going because I had an idea. I don't know if it'll work. We'll find out if it will. I'm gonna be using some 22 gauge wire again for this one. And for this, I'm going to grab another one of these um, carnelians, the matte carnelians. And I think I'd like another one that has like the little lines and things in them that it looks kind of cool and interesting because it's going to be the main focal point of this ring. So I've got that guy. And then I'm going to grab a bunch of these. These little guys. That, oh, I need, well, I'll, I'll find two of them. It'll be fine for the, for the earrings because remember I've got a ton of these. I had a whole other strand that I emptied onto here. All right. Now, these should fit on the 22 gauge wire. If they do not, then I will not use them. But, oh, and this is the part that I'm like, how do I make this work right? Because <laughs> I think I know what I want to do. Um, just real quick. Can I do two passes through there of the 22 gauge wire? I just want to see if this will work with two through here. I can. Aha! I know how to do this. All right. I'm going to start this the same way I did the other. 
but I'm going to um, unwind a lot more wire. I'm going to use about maybe 21 to 24 inches of wire. This is a lot of wire and it's going to be very awkward to um, manipulate on camera, but you know what? We're gonna we're gonna do it and if this hits the camera, it hits the camera, and that's gonna just be fine. Um, I don't think I want the exact middle. I think I want about one third of the way for this carnelian wire to go. That feels there's the end of that. That feels right to me. And just like with the other, I'm bending the wire up like this so that I can bend both of these around my mandrel. All right. Now that I've got those going that way, I'm going to wrap this up here kind of pinch it and this one the longer one I've got that space in my carnelian I'm going to angle my wire and feed it through there and pull this through there oof come on buddy trying to hold this on the mandrel and also pull this wire taut. It doesn't have the bend that this other one did. So it's getting that now. I'm just rubbing it with my finger so that it can have that same bend and these wires can run parallel to each other. All right, now this one is going to go under here towards this end. And I'm going to begin wrapping just this bottom wire around the bottom of my, and, and I've got this long bit sticking out of here. I'm going to wrap this around the bottom of this. It's, it's very similar to the way I wrapped the other, only instead of two wires, I'm just wrapping with one and I'm leaving this one out. And I'm just gonna keep going until I have the bottom wrapped. And once the bottom is wrapped, I still have this coming out of here. But before I take it off the mandrel, I'm gonna hold on to it, grab my hammer, and just give it some taps, little love taps for these guys. All right. So now that that is off of there, Go ahead and tuck this in before I start doing my other part. And again, I've got a backup plan in case this doesn't work out at all. But I have a feeling already it's it's going pretty well. And this part in here, I'm going to cut that wire and give it a little bit of a tuck. Just like that. All right, now this wire... I am going to absolutely straighten out with my fingers, or you can use some nylon jaw pliers. And I'm going to start stringing on some of this appetite. I'm going to do as many as will fit around this guy when I bend it around. So I'm going to start with a few, hold on, and I need to make sure that this is nice and straight here next to it, because any bumps are going to make it more difficult for these gemstones. They're very tiny and they have very tiny holes. So let's get all these guys on here. They should all fit, I think, on the 22 gauge wire. Yeah. All right. 
So I'm going to make a little halo around that carnelian stone with these little guys. And it's going to look really cool, like a little bezel, like, um, like a bezel almost with, uh, with some stones set in. going to do about three more and then I'm going to start bending just that part of the wire to see how many more I need to pop on there because that's that's all of them over there sorry it's not completely in the oh hey hey you go back with your friends All right, all right, all right, right, okay. So now I'm gonna start bending this around the carnelian like that. And it looks like, looks like I could use a few more. I'd say maybe five more. Let's do four and see where we end up with. Ooh, I like this dark blue one. Well, kind of more of a tealy guy. But this one's got kind of half and half colors. It's the fun thing about these little guys. You can pick and choose which ones go on next. I like this really light colored one can go right there. Let's see where we are. I think I have space for one more of these beads. So let's put one more guy on. All right. One more. All right. Whoop. Or do I? Nope. This is, this is it. All right. So right here, I'm going to hold on to these rounder beads. And do you see the space between where this little halo sits and where this begins? I'm going to fill that space with this wire. I'm going to keep wrapping down around there until we get all the way down to the other side. Oh my gosh, my idea worked! I'm so happy with myself right now. I am so happy with myself right now. I mean, I need to cut that little guy off, but... This is going to catch on everything. I love it so much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, now we've got a little carnelian with its flower crown. I'm going to cut this little excess bits off, tuck them in, and then I think I'm going to call it done with my my jewelry making. Oh, all right. Later, I will post all of them together. I am still leaving that uh, memory wire bracelet alone, so I'm not going to bring it over here. And I will finish making this last earring together. But let's just show and tell real quick before I go. From the companion bundle and with an extra piece that I got from Beadbox Bargains, I've got this necklace with some longer dangles. I don't mind a long dangle. And this ring. And then I've got my memory wire bracelet which is this repeating pattern over there. And then from the Bargain Bead Box, I have this beaded chain necklace. With some earrings with these drops. 
a beaded chain bracelet. And where did I put it? My little flower crown ring. There we go. Ah, I'm so happy with this. This is exactly what I needed today just to make some things. I mean, I've got a lot of other stuff that I need to do. I've got like grown lady chores, but this was a wonderful, very much needed creative break for me. And I hope y'all are taking some time to have some creative breaks, to make something fun, to do something creative. And uh, again, I'll post a picture on the posts on the community tab so that y'all can see all of this together. But this is what we made today. If you like what you see, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. I'll go ahead and put a link to my dragonfly painting if you missed it. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll get all these posted. Have a great day. Happy beating, guys. Bye.